welcome dear students we are you are welcome in the electronic circuit series and today's lecture is based upon the inductor and induction we discuss the many electrical components and uh, how these component can be used further in the electronic circuits up to now we discuss about the capacitor resistors transistors in the today's lecture we discuss the inductor which plays also an important role in the electronic circuit and the electronic designing so today's lecture what is the inductor the inductor is a passive component which stores the electric energy in the magnetic field when we apply the electric current through it when the electric current passes through it then the electric energy generated in the magnetic field or we can say that the inductor is an electrical devices which possesses the induction so through inductor the induction inductance can be produced so inductor is a passive component which stores the electric energy in the magnetic field when the electric current pass through it and it is the inductor is electrical device which possesses the inductance so inductor is made of the wire which has a property of inductance that is opposes the flow of current and inductance of a wire increases by increasing the number of turns as you see on the screen that this is the symbol of the inductor so inductor made of the simple wire and it is having the property of inductance and inductance of any wire increases when the number of turns in this wire we can increase next the alphabet l is used to represent the inductor we represent the inductor by the letter l and how we measure the inductance we measure through the henry the unit of the inductance is henry the inductance characteristics uh, the inductor so here in the figure we are having a inductor that produces the inductance the electric current i flows through the coil generate the magnetic field around it when we apply the electric current in any coil then magnetic field will produce around this coil so consider the magnetic field generated that flux will be the phi when current flows through it then the ratio of the flux to the current gives the inductance so inductance is the ratio of the flux flux and the current so it is represented by l l is equal to phi divided by i phi is the flux that generate because of the magnetic field and i is the current that is applied so the inductance l of the circuit depends upon the current means the path of the current and the magnetic permeability of the nearer material because the magnetic field generate and it depends upon the magnetic property of the material so magnetic permeability plays an important role in the inductance and in it depends upon the current inductance depends upon the current as well as the permeability of the magnetic permeability of the nearer material the magnetic permeabilities which is the ability of the material to form the magnetic field uh, because this uh, magnetic permeability we can find out the how much magnetic field is produced in the coil after applying the electric field so how many types of the inductors are classified uh, based upon the various factor like the size like the core material used to prepare the inductor type of the windings uh, to produce to prepare the inductor etc the core plays an important role in the selection of of the inductor on the basis of the core material the various type of inductors are defined first we can having the ferromagnetic or the iron core inductor and second is the air core inductor iron core inductor second is the air core inductor third is the toroidal core inductor next is the laminated core inductor then is a powdered core inductor so these are the on the basis of the core we can define the two importantly uh, used 
inductors first is the air core inductor that in which wound which is wound on the non ferrite material here we will use a ceramic to wound this to this wound this inductor the second is iron core inductor where we use the iron as we the name suggest we use the ferrite to prepare this type of inductor so on the basis of the core we define the inductor in the two category in broad category that is a one is the air core inductor that is wound on the non ferrite materials second is the iron core inductor that is wound on the ferrite cores what is the air core inductor as a name suggest that we are not using the ferrite materials we are not using the magnetic material so what we use we use we prepare it by using the ceramics or not using any material so inductor in which the either the core is completely absent or the ceramic material uh, means uh, the wire is rolled to prepare the uh, inductor and uh, no material in between that uh, as a core in the inductor so inductor in which the, either the core is completely absent or the ceramic material is used for making the core such type of inductor is called the air core inductor in the air core inductor the ceramic materials has a very low thermal coefficient of the expansion so because of this thermal low thermal coefficient of the expansion the shape of the material remains the same the shape of the material will be same and even if the rise of the temperature the ceramic has no magnetic properties no thermal coefficient uh, no 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 thermal effect will be there on that ceramic material as well as the no magnetic properties having this ceramic material so the low thermal coefficient of the expansion means the shape of the material remains same even with the rise of the temperature moreover ceramic material has no magnetic properties so the permeability of the inductor remains same due to the ceramic material in term in the air core inductor in the air core inductor the only work of the core is to give the coil in a particular shape as we see in the right hand side this is the shape of the inductor just we round the coil in a inductor shape no core material is inside it so the air core structure has many advantages like they reduce the core losses and increases the quality factor if we use a air core inductor the air core inductor is used for the high frequency application work where low inductance is required so air core we will use for the low inductance second important is the iron core inductor iron core where we use a ferrite material as a core so it is fixed value in conductor in which the iron core is kept between the coil uh, you see here in the diagram that uh, the lines represent the iron core ferrite materials ferrite core then uh, the iron core inductor is used in the filter circuit for smoothing out the ripple voltage that is produced in it it is used as a choke in the fluorescent tube lights as we see in houses that fluorescent uh, tube lighted light use a choke that choke is uh, the inductor that is made of the uh, that is the iron core inductor Uh, which is uh, which is uh, round up on the core material that is the ferrite and the industry we use it for the power supplies and the inverter systems etc this is a question that how it was and how we use this inductor the inductor is in electrical devices uses for the storing the electrical energy in the form of the magnetic field it is constructed by wounding the wire on the core and we give the particular shape so the core are made of the ceramic material iron or by the air uh, as we discussed that the uh, if we use the air core inductor then the ceramic material if we use the iron core then we use the iron or we can have the nothing that is the by the air core air in the inductor so the core may be may be toroidal or the e shape the coil carrying the electric current induces the magnetic field when we apply the electric current to the coil then it induces the magnetic field around the conductor the intensity of the magnetic field increases if the core is placed between the coil if if the core if we put the coil in the 
uh, 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 if, if we put the core in the coil then the magnetic field increases the core provides a low reluctance path to the magnetic flux so here you see in the diagram that this is the type of uh, core uh, the green part you are seeing on the screen that that is the core and the coil is round up on it so current coil, current carrying coil is here and the current is passed through this coil then there is produced induced current is induced current is is in the induction and the magnetic field is produced so the magnetic field induces the emf electromotive force in the coil which causes the current and according to the lenz's law the causes always oppose the effect hence the current is causes and it is induced because of the voltage here we are having a induced current so the emf opposes the change of the current that changes the magnetic field as the emf produce that emf opposes the change in the current and the and hence the changes in the magnetic field the current which reduces because of the inductance is known as the inductive reactance the inductive reactance increases with the increase of the number of the coils as the current reduce because of the inductance as the current pass and uh, this emf generate and which opposes the change of the current and this current reduces uh, because of the inductance and that will be the inductive reactance and this inductive reactance increases as increase the number of the turns in the coil as we increase the number of coil inductance uh, reactance de uh, decreases so we connect the inductor in two ways one is the series and another is the parallel circuit we connect these two so first we discuss the series inductor circuit how we connect the inductor in the series generally is the same as we discuss in the capacitor and resistance now in the series inductor circuits the number of inductors is connected serially in the circuit and the same amount of current will flow in each of the inductors connected for example if we are having the l1 l2 l3 inductors and that that are connected in the series then the current i flow through the circuit and that is the in this in the figure we are having that l1 l2 and l3 are connected in series i represent the current and these the two terminals m and n are defined so the current across the inductor l1 l2 l3 will be the i1 i2 and i3 respectively the value of the current across each inductor will be the same so i l1 is equal to i l2 is equal to i l2 is equal to i n it means the total will be the i i current will be the i m n from one terminal to the another terminal the total or the equivalent inductance will be given by this equation l is equal to l1 plus l2 plus l equivalent inductance or we can say that is a total inductance that would take the sum of all the inductors next is parallel inductor circuit when the number of inductors are connected in parallelly with each other then the circuit is known as a parallel inductor circuit in this type of circuit the circuit is divided into the each branch of the circuit you will see that m and n are two terminals and l1 l2 and l3 are connected parallelly and you see the current respectively are the l1 are the i1 i2 and i3 the current i1 is flowing in the inductor l1 and the similarly current i2 in the inductor l2 and i3 in the inductor l3 and it is the total amount of the current flowing in the circuit so the equivalent inductance is given by this equation 1 by l equivalent is equal to 1 by l1 plus 1 by l2 plus 1 by l3 so this is the total equivalent inductance in the inductor so 1 by l uh, total is equal to 1 by l1 plus 1 by l2 plus 1 by l3 now we discuss uh, these are the two uh, parallel or the series inductance now what is the self inductance self inductance or in the other words inductance of the coil so we say that the as inductor 
and the inductance produced in the coil. So, we are having a two type of inductance, self inductance and mutual inductance. So, in the self inductance, in other words, the inductance of the coil is defined as the property of the coil due to which the opposes the change of the current flowing through it. So, inductance is attained by the coil due to the self induced EMF produced in the coil and itself by changing the current flowing through it. As uh, the self inductance, this self inductance produced, the inductance produced by self generated EMF in the coil when the current is passed through it. So, this is this is because when the current pass then we can have the self induced EMF. Now, see in the diagram, if the current in the coil is increases, the self induced EMF produces in the coil oppose the rise of the current. Here you see as the current in the coil is increases, the self induced EMF produced in the coil and that will oppose the current. It means the direction of the induced EMF is opposite to the applied voltage. The direction, the direction of the current which is generated must be the opposite to the applied voltage when we apply the voltage on it. So, as in diagram you are seeing that the current is giving to the coil induced EMF generated that is defined by the red uh, lines. You are seeing that the coil in the blue and the flux line generated and induced EMF generated this switch that through which uh, through battery through which we can pass the current. And because as we pass the current to the coil, self-induced EMF uh, generated and then it opposes the rise of the current and the direction of the induced EMF that is produced opposite to the direction of the applied voltage. If the current in the coil is decreases, the EMF induced in the coil is in such a direction so that it can oppose to the fall of the current. This means the direction of the self induced EMF is same as that of the applied voltage. Self index inductance does not prevent the change of the current, but it delays the change of the current flowing through it. So, the property of the coil only opposes the changes current, alternate current and does not affect the steady current that is the direct current which flows through it. The purpose of the self inductance is that that the only the only it will oppose the change in the current, but it will not affect the steady current. So, and it is its uh, unit is the Henry. What is the expression? We can uh, determine the self inductance of the coil by following expression as we know E is equal to L di by dt. So, we can write L is equal to E di by dt. Now, the above expression is used. Uh, when the magnetic field or self inductance EMF as E represented by the EMF in the coil and the rate of change of the current di by dt is uh, okay, can be find out. The putting the value of this as E is equal to 1 volt and di by dt is 1 ampere per second then the value of the inductance will be L that is a 1 Henry. So, by this formula we can find out the inductance as we know the applied current. Hence from the above derivation the statements can be given the coil the set have the inductance of 1 Henry if the EMF 1 volt is induced in the circuit when apply the current flowing through it changes the rate of 1 ampere per second. This is the definition of the self inductance. So, the, uh, the then we can write E is equal to L di by dt L i uh, d by dt L i. We can also write it at E is equal to n d phi by dt d phi by dt. So, we can take the equivalent of that d phi by L i is equal to n phi. Then L is equal to n phi by i. At uh, and Henry, uh, unit is Henry, L, L is the inductance. What is the N here? N is the number of turns in the coil and phi is the magnetic flux that is generated and I is a current flowing, flowing through the coil. So, if we know the number of coils and we know the current apply and magnetic flux then we can find out the inductance, self inductance in the coil. The following points in the self inductance we can turn from, from this, the value of the inductance will be high if the magnetic flux is stronger for the given value of the current. Other point is the value of inductance also depends upon the material of the coil. Second is the number of the turns of the coil or the solenoid. By turning the coil we can produce a solenoid. The higher will the value of the inductance and the rate of change of the current will be lower as it 
reduce the current and one henry is also equal to one weber per ampere the solenoid has a self inductance the example of this self inductance is the solenoid next is the mutual inductance the the self inductance where the coil then we pass the current emf generated and that emf generated produce the inductance now the mutual inductance mutual means where we put something with this the two coils is defined as a property of the coil due to which it opposes the change of the current in the other coil from the one coil we can restrict the change of current in the another coil or we can say the neighboring coil uh, we are having a two coil one will reduce the one will oppose the change of the current so when a current in the neighboring coil changes the flux set up in the coil because of this the changing flux of emf is induced in the coil that is called the mutually induced emf and the phenomena is known as the mutual inductance what is happening in this we are having a two coil when the current in the neighboring coil changes the flux set up in the coil because of this the changing emf is induced in the coil that is the that is known as the mutual induced emf and this phenomena is the mutual inductance in the mutual inductance the flux will change thank you very much